Hey folks, David Stewart here. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Time for another movie review. This one is uh, the 2023 film Wonka, starring Timothy Chalamet as the creature known as Wonka. It is a prequel to the Gene Wilder, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Very specifically a prequel to that movie, not a prequel to like the the one that Tim Burton did with Johnny Depp, not a prequel to really the book, um, but just a prequel to that movie. My big problem with this movie is that I don't think it should exist. It's like a meta problem, right? It just exemplifies everything that I dislike about Hollywood right now. Uh, the movie shouldn't exist. It's a prequel to like a classic nostalgic movie. Why not do something original? Well, the answer is people maybe wouldn't watch original things. There's that nostalgia train for Gen X and Gen Y kids, and it is going to go all the way until the track ends and the train plummets into a canyon. They're not going to give up on the soulless cash grabs. And the movie really just kind of felt soulless. Uh, I, that's the feeling I got. It was like this, I wish they hadn't made this movie. It's kind of funny, by the way, Roald Dahl actually did write a sequel to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory called Charlie and the Great Glass Lift or Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator if you're in the United States. Uh, even in the movie, you could see they like go over the factory with like their um, with that glass elevator. Well, in the in the real sequel book, they go to space and have a science fiction space adventure at Space Hotel USA where they fight aliens that can shape themselves into letters, weird sausage aliens that look like avocados and stuff. So uh, it's quite absurd, the sequel. That's probably why they've never made it, is that people would just be dumbfounded considering they've maybe never read the book and completely interacted with the absurdism in the book. Um, and it just takes that absurdism to the next level. So I don't know. Instead, they did a prequel where they uh, took some of the fantasy elements from that first Gene Wilder movie and just kind of made them even less prominent uh, while keeping a rather absurd, snidely whiplash villains and a, a setting that didn't make a whole lot of sense. So yeah, that's my big complaint about the movie. Uh, I'll get into some of the details about it because there are some things that it does well. It is a Hollywood production, so there's a lot of money that gets dumped into it. And the truth is, all my complaints about it shouldn't exist, I watched it with my wife and she liked it. Normies are not going to remotely interact with the fact that everything that Hollywood makes now is a sequel or a remake or a requel or a prequel to something that is old that people already like. They don't do anything new. They're out of original ideas. This is just another symptom of that. But normies, I don't think they really care. And to be honest, they executed enough things well that I think your normal person is going to enjoy the Wonka movie, even though I think it's a rather soulless and unoriginal uh, work despite all the effort that went into making it. So let me let me go into some specifics. Let's start with the production. So um, the aesthetics, I give a nine out of ten. I think they're really good. I think the settings are really beautiful. I think the lighting of the movie in particular is done really well. Um, it has a nostalgic and soft look to it. Uh, this the the uh, the sets are highly detailed and they work. They have a timeless and uh, nostalgic quality to all of the sets that you see. Uh, not as fantastical maybe as the Gene Wilder movie, but that's kind of the point. Um, the point of the Gene Wilder movie was like you go from this kind of drab, boring external world into this incredible factory. In this case, it's more like the incredible part is Willy Wonka kind of entering into what is already a pretty nice looking world. So overall, I, th I find the aesthetics really pleasing. Um, the music, not as much. It is a musical. The musical numbers, the new original musical numbers, I found completely forgettable. They're all mid-tempo. They don't really express anything other than what people are doing at the moment. They feel like a little mid-tempo Broadway dance numbers where you kind of do like some choreography while you sing a mid-tempo song that's not really about anything. It's kind of like the fun the fun songs in there, but none of them are really memorable or really well done. So I give that a six out of 10. Um, otherwise the score works, like they have themes from the original movie for that nostalgic feeling. And those work for the most part, but it's the original numbers, they're just not good. You know, they're just not good, that's all. So production overall is a, is a seven and a half. That's, um, you know, that's definitely like the C territory. Um, it's not, not bad, but that's its strength. I think its strength is in the Hollywood production level. 
The story, I think, is quite a bit worse. If we look at the setting and the exposition of the setting as a storytelling device, I give it a 5 out of 10. That's a high not passing grade, right? 50%. It's F, all right? It's a high F. It really suffers from the prequel curse. The prequel curse is that your prequel always must be, uh, because it's made after the original movie, it's in the very bad position where the story and everything takes place before the movie people are familiar with, but it's a sequel, so it has to constantly refer to things that will happen in the next movie. So the tie-in has to be... Uh, it ends up being a lot more absurd. There's an Oompa Loompa who's chasing Willy Wonka around for no reason, which is completely bizarre considering how the, the Oompa Loompas were in the original book. Uh, they were pygmies, um, by the way, right? Weird little pygmies um, in the original version of the book. Apparently that's been um, bowdlerized after the fact, but uh, that's how they originally were. But in this case, it's like, you know, you have Hugh Grant as a shrunk down Oompa Loompa rather than having a dwarf play the Oompa Loompas. Could have been an opportunity for some short actors to to have a have a part in the film, but whatever. They shrunk Hugh Grant down. He's one of the few, I guess, funnier parts of the movie, uh, and he works as a good, I guess, comic relief character. But yeah, you have a lot. That's the prequel curse. You're always referring to what's going to happen, what's already happened, and that really can disturb the story and limits what you can do with the story. To be honest. Um, and overall, the setting is, it has the Roald doll absurdism, but uh, none of it really works, I think. You have a chocolate cartel that stores liquid chocolate for some reason. Uh, you have lots of weird little things that um, just don't really make a lot of sense when you think about them. Like the police don't make a lot of sense. The, uh, the, like the evil hotel owners don't make a lot of sense. Like it, it's all just doesn't quite fit together. Even if you have like an absurdist eye for the original Roald Dahl material, it feels like Roald Dahl fan fiction, but bad. In fact, I mean, it is fan fiction. The entire movie is just corporate fan fiction, which I've complained about for this point at this point for almost a decade. Um, but that's how Hollywood is. Hollywood's been out of ideas and been unable to do anything new for a decade. So that's the problem with the setting. I give it a five out of ten. Characters of dialogue, I give them a six out of ten for the characters' dialogue acting. There's some good, some bad. I think Timothy Chalamet is actually one of the stronger elements in the movie. He plays everything pretty straight, the way Gene Wilder did in the original uh, movie, and that's that works. Um, and it works maybe a little bit better because everybody else is really bad. Like, the acting is particularly bad in this movie, I felt like. There's so much melodrama. Uh, everybody is really exaggerating their, their facial expressions like they're on Broadway. Maybe they're Broadway actors. And no one told them, yeah, our camera can see your face very close. You don't need to do big expressions. You can be a little more subtle with what you're doing because everybody's going to see your face nice and clear. Uh, but yeah, it's it's way over the top. It's super melodramatic. Um, you have comedic actors that are e even, you know, it's like they're doing a Mad TV skit. In fact, they have have an actor from Mad TV <laughs> as the as the police chief. Um, it's really over the top. So it's so over the top. It would fit with like the original movie, except for the fact that um, we're not in like a, a crazy factory where the over-the-top characters are sort of getting their comeuppance. Everybody's just doing melodrama as if it's like a children's TV show, I guess, and it just doesn't come off very well. Uh, so some some are good, some are bad. The hotel owner and the and the the relationship between the ho the the hotel owner and the laundry owner, I guess, and and the the guy that's there that's kind of funny. There is some you know mildly funny parts. The Oompa Loompa is kind of funny, but for the most part, like the villains are snidely whiplash caricatures which fits which which fits with Roald Dahl but these ones are particularly silly and stupid um, with no real motivations for what they're doing other than just being evil all the time um, that brings me to the plot which I give it a six out of ten that's me being kind of generous it's mostly very contrived and chaotic and all over the place the setup uh, doesn't make a lot of sense it's like oh you have to you didn't read the uh, you didn't read the fine print so now you're a slave for life then they find a way out. So why doesn't everyone just leave the, like they're imprisoned below the hotel? Why don't you just leave once Willy Wonka finds a way out? Nah, I didn't really think that much. We gotta, we gotta get everybody out of the, the slavery. So it, it, it's like piling on conflict. 
So a lot of times when you come up with a plot, if you don't have a strong central conflict, you start to pile conflict up. That is, you come up with lots of different problems that have to be solved to make up for the fact that the main characters are not highly motivated to solve any central problem. If you don't have a central problem to be solved, you don't have a main plot goal, your conflict is weak, you start to add extra conflicts. So you have an A story. This A story is that uh, Wonka wants to sell candy and the chocolate cartel doesn't want him to. That's a pretty weak conflict when you think about it. You could just go to another town, right, and sell chocolate and just skip out on that town. Not a big deal, right? But we have to uh, then pile on a conflict. Oh, he didn't read the fine print because he's illiterate. Well, we're going to pile illiteracy as a problem. On now he has to learn how to read, right? He's illiterate, so he didn't read the contract, and now he's a slave. But he knows how to escape, but he can't just escape from that. Uh, he has to pay off his debt and fix it legalistically. The, the contract matters because of the, the police, right? You just come up with like a story algebra where you're just adding all these little conflicts, and it comes off. It's so convoluted. You have chocolate-addicted monks inside a church. Uh working for the chocolate cartel. You have a chocolate cartel storing all of this giant chocolate for reasons that don't make any sense. Like, how are you bribing? Oh, you're going to bribe people with chocolate. That's a nice, absurd thing. Um, but you add that onto there because what else are you going to bribe them with? Money? Like, if, if everybody's, like, poor and there's not enough chocolate, like, you, how does that make you more money? Right? Why are they saving all the extra chocolate? Oh, to jack up the price. They can just make less chocolate, <laughs> you know? Uh, and of course, the, the evil characters have a secret cache of evidence. Like the main evil character has a secret cache of evidence hidden in a wall that the good guys can just find that solves all the problems. It's really bad. In fact, I'm going to downgrade it. I'm going to make it a 5 out of 10. I'm going to make it a high F. Because the heist movie, the heist at the end is funny and it kind of works. But the conflict... There's no real conflict that makes any sense um, to what we're getting at here. But that being said, it it's somewhat functional. The story is somewhat functional. There's this thing that Willy Wonka's alone and he ends the story alone. So there's this bittersweet ending where he helps everyone, but he's alone at the end, which is necessary for him to set up the movie that already happened where he's looking for a successor in Charlie. Um, he's looking for someone who has a genuine heart and doesn't just want his money. Uh, but it seems like those things just disappeared for no reason at the end of this movie. It's it's really uh, not a very well-crafted ending, in my opinion. But I don't know. It works, uh, it works, I guess, in a really basic, functional way. And some people might feel sad about the ending. Uh, the general effect, I give it a 5 out of 10 for the meta reasons I talked about. I don't think it should exist. It is a skin suit. I don't like skin suits. I wish people would make original movies. And when I see a skin suit, I'm just painfully aware of how soulless it ends up feeling to me. I'm painfully aware that it's not the work of the original mind that created it, like Roald Dahl, and is in fact uh, a way to get people interested in seeing a movie that would not normally be interested in seeing a movie because you lack the ability to make anything new or interesting or good. Uh, so that's why I don't like it. And it, it puts me in a mood that makes me just resistant to anything good that the movie's going to do. So I put it as a, as a 5 out of 10. The final verdict is it, it'll squeak up to like, a, I'm going to squeak it up to a D minus, right? It's really like a 5.8 if I since I downgrade the plot to 5 out of 10 because of the insane convoluted piling on conflict. But, uh, you know, let's say a D minus, 6 out of 10. We'll round it up. It's not very good. It's passable in a sense, like it's not the worst movie you could watch and there are good things about it, but it's really a movie that I wish had never been made. And I think it was pretty popular, which goes to my point that like my complaints don't really matter. And because it's pretty popular, I expect them to make somehow another Wonka movie. I don't know. It'll be a prequel to the prequel or an interquel or who knows what they'll do at this point. Anyway, let me know what you thought down below in the comment section if you watched it or if you uh, passed and didn't give your time or money or attention to people who just are not very original. I don't know whether these people hate you, but they certainly are not interested in making a good story. They're interested in um, banking on that is on the sweet nostalgia books. Maybe it works though. Maybe it gave you a good sense of nostalgia and that was worth it to you. And I'm not going to judge you if that's you. Okay. So have a great one and I'll see you all next time. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hop on my Patreon where you get a free book every month, including um, the Keys to Prolific Creativity. I think this month's free book is...
Voices of the Void. So that's a good one. It's a good horror, sci-fi horror book. So check it out, and I will see you all next time. Have a great, great day.